I think, although great new ideas are usually articulated by individuals, they're nearly always generated by communities. And I think what I, what I see as the waste is the waste that we make of, of that possibility of cooperative intelligence. Um, being an artist, you hear a lot of talk about genius, um, which is the process of singling out certain people in art history and saying those were the important ones, you know, Picasso, Rembrandt, Shostakovich, whatever. Whenever you look at any of those artists, you find that they they lived and drew from a very, very active, flourishing cultural scene. And they were only one of the elements in that scene. All these people who are called genius actually sat in the middle of something that I call senius. S-C-E-N-I-U-S. So just as genius is the um, creative intelligence of an individual, senius is the creative intelligence of a community. And what I want to see is more attention given to that possibility of, of creative behavior. So what that means, of course, is two things. One, one of them is the understanding that all people are born unequal, so everybody has a particular and unique set of gifts and talents, whatever they are. And secondly, that intelligence is um, generated by communities by cooperation of some kind. Um, so I suppose the, the thing about the, the biggest obstacle to that at the moment is that people have to earn a living. I often get asked to come and talk at art schools and I rarely get asked back because the first thing I always say is I'm here to persuade you not to have a job.
scares me. What is it about Sam that scares you? He flies off the handle. I see it now. I see what Tess was talking about. I never told you this, Courtney, but she, uh... She, uh, she left me. Tess left me. For six months, she moved back in with her parents. I know. second chance and promise her a change. You have changed, Sam. Hey, Gertie, since I've been up here, I've sent Tess, I've sent her over a hundred video messages. Where did those messages go? Did they ever reach her? Sam, I can only account for what occurs on the base. What about the messages she sent to me? Sam, I can only account for what occurs on the base.
Sometimes I don't. If I like a moment, I mean me, personally, I don't like to have the distraction, Kim. So I stay.
And honestly, being an animal activist can be really hard because every year, 100 billion, over 100 billion animals are killed by and for humans. That's billion with a B. So it's challenging. But on the other hand, being an animal activist is kind of easy. Because all I have to do is remind people of what they already know and remind people of what they already feel. So I assume everyone here, except for the sociopaths, has had that experience of like bonding with a cat or bonding with a dog and feeling that heart-expanding love. And of course, I mean, as I've been doing this for a long time, I've learned many things that have sort of reinforced my animal activism. Um, the fact that animal agriculture is the second leading cause of climate change that 75% of antibiotic resistance, the plague that awaits us all, is a result of animal agriculture. Because the animals on factory farms are treated so badly and they're so sick, the only thing keeping them alive are mega doses of antibiotics. The role of animal agriculture in cancer, diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer, obesity, the fact that 90% of rainforest deforestation is attributable to animal agriculture. 50% of ocean acidification comes from animal agriculture. So all these facts sort of strengthen and buttress my activism. But at the end of the day, what sustains me as an activist is love. The unconditional love I had for all the animals I grew up with, and the unconditional love I have for all animals. And I think that's the best part of who I am, that selflessness and love and patience and kindness. And I think it's the best part of who we are.
years old, I first heard about something called climate change or global warming. Apparently that was something humans had created by our way of living. I was told to turn off the lights to save energy and to recycle paper to save resources. I remember thinking that it was very strange that humans, who are an animal species among others, could be capable of changing the Earth's climate. Because if we were, and if it was really happening, we wouldn't be talking about anything else. As soon as you turn on the TV, everything would be about that. Headlines, radio, newspapers. You would never read or hear about anything else. As if there was a world war going on. But no one ever talked about it. If burning fossil fuels was so bad that it threatened our very existence, how could we just continue like before? Why were there no restrictions? Why wasn't it made illegal? To me, that did not add up. It was too unreal. So when I was 11, I became ill. I fell into depression. I stopped talking and I stopped eating. In two months, I lost about 10 kilos of weight. Later on, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, OCD, and selective mutism. That basically means I only speak when I think it's necessary. Now is one of those moments. Okay, ich habe noch einen Song für euch und danach kommen die wunderbaren Fable. Mein Name ist N13, vielen Dank, dass ihr hier seid, vielen Dank, dass ihr zu Konzerten geht und zusammensteht und gemeinsam Kultur macht. Dankeschön, schönen Abend noch.
Ganz lieben Dank, vielen Dank. Schön, dass ihr da seid. Ein super schöner Abend, ich freue mich. Ich habe Gänsehaut. Dankeschön.